This is the story of Singapore Airlines Flight 231. If you don't know, the Airbus A380 is the world's largest passenger airplane. It carries a lot of people. Just to put things into context, a typical Emirates A380 can handle well above 500 people, while a 737 in an all-economy configuration tops out at about 180. It would take four 737s to replace one A380. And that's with the space on the A380 being allocated to things like bars, spas, showers, and first-class cabins. If you decided to forego all of that and went with an all-economy A380, it could seat up to 800 people. That is insane. So the question is, what do you do when such a large plane has an emergency? Well, we thankfully haven't had to find out. Well, we've had a few close calls like the story of Qantas 32. The story of Singapore 321 is one of those lesser-known stories. On the 9th of February 2020, an Airbus A380 was making the trip from Singapore to Sydney. With Singapore being a connecting hub and with so many people wanting to travel to Sydney, it makes sense to put an A380 on the route. On this day, as the pilots approached Sydney, they were greeted by some bad news. The weather in Sydney was not the best. There was quite a bit of wind from the east-southeast direction with a crosswind of 29 knots. Moreover, severe wind shear had been reported for runway 16 right. Wind shear really messes with the plane, especially on final approach, as the wind quickly changes direction for a very short period of time. It can really destabilize a plane on final. Here's how the Aussie Bureau of Meteorology put it. Wind shear can be defined as a change in the wind's direction and or speed over a vertical or horizontal distance. It is significant when it causes changes to an aircraft's headwind or tailwind, such that the aircraft is abruptly displaced from its intended flight path and substantial control action is required to correct it." End quote. Seeing all of this, the pilots decided to go over the missed approach procedures for Sydney Airport. They didn't know it right now, but it's a good thing that they did. Then the plane was cleared to line up with runway 16 right. They lined the plane up with the runway and took the plane down. The pilots fought with the weather to keep the plane centered with the runway. The jet was just now 1,000 feet above the runway, and they flew right through some heavy wind shear. The pilots immediately knew that they had no way of making this landing. They were no longer stabilized, and the best thing for everyone was to go around and try again. They commanded TOGA, or takeoff slash go around power from the engines, retracted the flaps a bit, and then let the controllers know that they were going around. ATC instructed them to climb to 3,000 feet and to turn right to 270 degrees. But as the jet climbed away, to the horror of the controllers, the massive plane started banking to the left instead of the right. This was a huge problem as Sydney has a runway 16 right, the runway that they were landing on, and a runway 16 left, a runway, as the designator says, is on the left. This left turn took them directly into the approach path for runway 16 left. The controller was confused by this, and he or she inquired if the plane was turning right, to which the pilots of the A380 were like, no, we're not. The controllers immediately gave them vectors to get them out of this area, but they were now getting dangerously close to a Dash 8 that was at their 12 o'clock, who was 11 kilometers or 6 nautical miles away. The Dash 8 was landing on runway 16 left. The A380 was in turning as fast as the controllers wanted it to, so they got the Dash 8 to turn to the right to keep separation with the A380. Now, this would have done the trick at most other airports, but for such a busy airport like Sydney, it caused some problems. In this case, the right-hand turn took the Dash 8 into the path of a landing 737, which had lined up behind the A380 to land on runway 16 right. The Dash 8 was now bearing into the path of the 737, and the distance between them dropped all the way down to 2.6 nautical miles, which is well below the minimum required. This caused the controller to immediately issue a few traffic avoidance maneuvers, and all the planes then landed safely at Sydney. Airports such as Sydney are convergence points for the world's air traffic. I mean, go look at Big Jet TV on YouTube. He streams from near Heathrow Airport, and the amount of planes that you see come in and out is just insane. For all of this to work, you need to maintain very strict separation standards. You see, planes need to be spaced out at just the right intervals, both horizontally and vertically. Otherwise, the risk of an accident happening may be too high. A huge part of determining the separation is the radar that is employed at the airport. The better the radar, the closer you can get planes to each other before it becomes a problem. 
In this case, with parallel approaches on two parallel runways, the planes needed to be 3 nautical miles or 5.6 kilometers apart and 1,000 feet apart vertically. Anything less than that and you're in trouble. Another thing is you have to be familiar with the go-run procedures at each airport. In this case, the go-run procedure asked the pilots to fly the runway heading of 155 degrees and then to turn right to 107 degrees. Now that we know all of this, we can finally look at how this accident actually came to pass. When the crew of the A380 were flying the approach to runway 16 right, they were under a lot of stress. A lot more than what is usual for an approach like this. They had to deal with wind shear, they had to deal with general bad weather, and then they had to deal with some of the most busy airspace in the world. Then, when they had to go around, they needed to do even more stuff. They had to manage the high energy state of the aircraft. They had to reconfigure the aircraft in under a minute. And on top of all of this, ATC came on and gave them instructions way before the pilots had expected them to, meaning that they had a lot on their plate just as the plane was going around. This is why the crew turned left instead of right. They were just too busy and misheard the ATC instructions. The mistake that the pilots made could be caught in the readback. Pilots always repeat back their instructions to the controllers so that the controller can double check what the pilots are about to do. But in this case, the pilots of flight 231 omitted the direction of the turn. The controllers let that slide, which meant that there was nothing stopping the giant jumbo jet from turning left into oncoming traffic. The problem with omissions in the readbacks is that you don't catch the mistakes till you observe it happening. Moreover, from the pilot's perspective, ATC not correcting your readback is taken as an implicit confirmation of the readback. Research has shown that more often than not, readback omissions are associated with, quote, diverse aspects of concurrent task management. That's a lot of words to say that if you have a lot to do, you're going to miss things. As we have seen, if these omissions go undetected, then they're a huge problem for aviation safety. Unfortunately for this incident, we do not know about the visibility at the time of the accident, but if it were low, then it could be argued that this could have ended in absolute disaster. Now, if you're new to the channel, you might be wondering why I made a video for an incident where nothing really happened. No planes really collided, no one really died, there was no crash. I make videos like these when things get close to falling apart so that I can show you how the safety aspects of aviation kick in at just the last minute and in most cases, save the day. That's what this channel is about. We look at incidents and accidents that others don't really look at and if that sounds fun to you, then I would love if you could subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching this episode of Mini Air Crash Investigation. If you like the videos that I make, do consider liking and subscribing. Thank you and I'll catch you guys next time. Stay safe.